Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to yet another tutorial by Carline Show Productions. In today's video, we will create our own custom stream alert. We will create four different alerts in this video and you will need Photoshop, you will need After Effects, but at the same time, it won't be anything complicated. So I'm pretty sure even if you're, you know, totally new to Photoshop, totally new to After Effects, if you just follow my steps, you will end up with um, the same alert that, you know, I'm going to eventually show you how to create in this tutorial. And yeah, this is a perfect starting point, I would say, you know, if you've been streaming for a while and now you're looking to get your own custom alerts and you can really afford a designer. Uh, yeah, this is this is this is perfect for you. You know, you will learn how to do it on your own. Self-efficiency is is good in any uh, aspects of your lives. Um, so yeah, if you can just do it on your own and, and learn a new skill, uh, then why not? And this tutorial will be uh, in, uh, in kind of three smaller parts. The first part will be the Photoshop part where we will actually create the design. Then we will proceed to the After Effects part where we will uh, animate the alert. And then in the final part, I will show you how to import those uh, alerts to your OBS. So let's proceed to the first part, which is the Photoshop part. So once you open your Photoshop, create a new project and then copy all those details that you see here. So width of our project will be 1920. Height will be the same. So we will create a square ratio project. Resolution, let's actually up that to 100. RGB, 8-bit, background contents, let's go with white for now. And then let's go ahead and create our new project. And yeah, we are starting fresh. The first step uh, that we will do is that we will create a rectangle, uh, which you do by clicking on the rectangle tool, of course, and then drawing a rectangle. Uh, you don't have to be precise. Let's go with 900 times 140. I think that looks clean. And then select uh, the rectangle. But first, actually, you need to make sure this is unlocked, the background layer. So select the rectangle, then select uh, the background while holding the control key and center it uh, vertically on the uh, canvas. Then we will do the same uh, or pretty much the same thing that we did uh, for the first rectangle, but the second rectangle will be a bigger one. And let's round it up. Let's make it 1300 times 400. And now let's uh, select the bigger rectangle, hold control, select the background and center it vertically and horizontally as well. Now let's move the bigger rectangle below the smaller rectangle and then move the smaller rectangle uh, to be exactly in the middle of the top portion of the bigger rectangle to just kind of sit, sit on top of it and at the same time be in the middle. You can tell that it's in the middle. Uh, yeah, you can see those little purple lines. Uh, if you don't see them, make sure this uh, is toggled, show transform controls. And yeah, that way you will be uh, able to tell that it's exactly in the middle uh, of the top portion. Before we proceed to the second part, let me actually change the background color to something uh, different than white. Uh, you do that by right clicking on it, go to blending options and change the color Ah, this is actually perfect. Uh, so yeah, black color, opacity, change it to 70. And now the second part of this uh, Photoshop uh, part is that we will create a stroke uh, for both of those rectangles. Uh, to achieve that, we need to duplicate them. So select the smaller rectangle and duplicate the smaller rectangle and then also duplicate the bigger rectangle. Uh, select the copy of the smaller rectangle, 
go to the rectangle tool again and get rid of the fill and add in a stroke uh, in a color of your choice. I will go with this uh, green color, for example, and then do the same for the copy of the bigger rectangle. So once again, select it, go to the rectangle tool, fill, get rid of the fill and add in a stroke. By the way, the width of the stroke will be five pixels. For example, I think that's um, that's enough. So yeah, right now we have the uh, the core of our alert. The last thing that we need to do is to create the text. So as I said, we will create four different alerts. Um, it will be a follower alert, subscriber alert, uh, donation alert, and host alert. Um, so yeah. And then of course you can add in uh, some other alerts if you uh, if you want to. So for the first one, it will be uh, the follower alert. Uh, by the way, if you want to have this exact font, uh, I will leave a link to this font in the description down below. It's called Craftsman. I think it's a, it's a free font. So you can go ahead and download that if you want to have the same font as I use in this tutorial. And then move the text to the middle of the smaller rectangle to make sure it's properly lined up. Once again, uh, select it, hold control and select the smaller rectangle and center it horizontally and then vertically. And there you go. Uh, we have our follower alert created in Photoshop. Now what we need to do is, of course, uh, create uh, a different text for the new subscriber, host and new donation. So once again, we will right click on it, duplicate the layer, duplicate it once again, we will need it four times. So yeah, duplicate it four times. And then we will also duplicate the rectangle four times as well. Uh, but before we do that, we need to group them first. So select all of them, hold the control key to select uh, all of them and then create a folder and name, the, uh, name it rectangles. And then right click, duplicate it uh, four times. And then move the text layers to each of those folders. So yeah, right now we have four identical uh, folders with four identical layers in them, or actually five identical layers in them. And now the only thing that we need to change in each of those is the text and then also the color of the stroke. So for the first one, we don't need to touch anything in here. This will be our follower alert. So let's go ahead, double click on the folder and name it follower alert. And now let's go ahead and hide this folder, hide this folder as well, and then hide the last one as well and just leave one of them visible for now and select the text tool, change the follower to subscriber and make sure it is uh, centered vertically horizontally and yeah as I said we will change the color for each of those alerts and for the subscriber alert let's go with uh, go with something purple-ish I would say uh, so yeah select the uh, the stroke of the smaller rectangle and change the uh, the color to something of your choice. I will go with this nice purple color and I will do the same for the stroke of the bigger rectangle. And here we go. So now we have our subscriber alert as well. I will close the folder, double click on it and rename it to subscriber alert. And then I will hide it and I will unhide one of those folders. And then let's create the donation alert. So change the text to new donation, 
select the smaller rectangle, center it, uh, select the stroke of the smaller rectangle, and let's go with red, for example, doesn't really matter. And let's do the same for the stroke of the bigger rectangle. So right now we've also created the donation alert, same process. Donation alert, hide it. And then the last one will be the host alert. Uh, let's go with new host. And then the same process as we've done many times. And for the color, let's go with orange. And then you know the rest. Double click, host alert, and that's it. So right now we've created four different alerts. As you could see, the process was pretty simple, pretty fast. So yeah, we have everything we need when it comes to the actual files. Now, the last thing that we need to do is that we need to export each layers in each of those uh, folders separately. Um, and yeah, it actually sounds complicated, but it's very easy to do. So let's start with the follower alert. The first step that you need to do is you need to hide the layer that we've created. So click on the uh, hide icon uh, and make sure the background is uh, invisible. And then open the folder and start hiding everything within that folder. So make sure everything is hidden, make sure the background is transparent and the only thing that's visible for now is the text which says new follower. And then go ahead and click on file, go to export, quick export as PNG. And um, yeah, make sure you create some kind of a folder where everything will be stored so you can access it and find it uh, quite easily. And then also create uh, folders within that folder. Yeah, and yeah, you want to create a folder for each uh, for each of those alerts that we've created. Yeah, if you watched some of my tutorials in the past, you know that uh, I like to be as organized as possible. I don't know if I've mentioned that already. Uh, and yeah, then go ahead and export the new follower text, then export the stroke of the smaller rectangle, name it small stroke, then hide it, unhide the smaller rectangle, hide it, unhide the stroke of the bigger rectangle. And then lastly, uh, export the bigger rectangle. And then press OK and then go ahead and create, or sorry, repeat uh, the same with all three of those folders. Uh, I will do that off this record so we save some time. Um, but yeah, the process is the same, so go ahead and export your files uh, now. And then we will proceed to the second part, which will be the After Effects part, where we will animate uh, our alert. Uh, and yeah, it will be just a very basic animation. So yeah, go ahead, export the files, and I will see you in the second part in a second. And by the way, what I also forgot to mention is to save the actual Photoshop file itself, just in case you need to make any changes in the future. So yeah, make sure you uh, save the actual file as well.
So welcome to the second part of this tutorial. Let's go ahead and create a new composition inside After Effects. And let's make sure the width and the height of our project is 1920 times 1920. And the duration of uh, the timeline, let's make it six seconds. That's actually perfect. And I'll press OK. Let's start importing our files inside uh, After Effects. So we will start with the follower alert and we will click and drag all the layers that we've created. We will start with the bigger rectangle. We will put the stroke on top of it. Uh, then we will click and drag the smaller rectangle and drag the smaller stroke on top of it. And then also, of course, we need the text. And as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, we will go with a very simple animation, uh, which you will be able to uh, get in the default version of the After Effects. So you don't need to download anything. Uh, and also, yeah, we there won't be any complicated animations going on in this tutorial. We will create three uh, separate animations. We will create an animation for the text then for the smaller stroke and then for the bigger stroke. So go to the effects and presets tab. If you don't see this tab, you can go to a uh, window and then make sure that this is toggled. You can also use control five uh, on your keyboard. Um, but yeah, search for CC light sweep is the fact that we're going to use for the smaller stroke and for the bigger stroke. Um, so click and drag that effect to the smaller stroke and then click and drag it to the bigger stroke as well. And now search for the CC light wipe, which will be the animation that we will use for the actual text. So once again, click and drag it to the follower text. All right, so let's start with the actual animations. We will start with the text uh, layer. So click on this little arrow right here, go to effects, CC light wipe. And yeah, just to show you how the animation looks, it will look approximately like this. So it's a classic CC light, uh, light wipe animation inside After Effects. And what we need to do is we need to change the intensity to something less drastic. Yeah, 30 looks quite nice. So change the intensity to 30. Uh, shape, let's go with the round shape. And yeah, that's uh, basically it. So right now what we need to do is we need to keyframe it so it actually becomes an animation. So make sure your timeline indicator is all the way at 0, 0.00. And let's start with a completion of 30. So change the completion to 30. And then click on the clock icon right here. Move your timeline to approximately two seconds and change the completion to zero and click enter. And right now, as you are able to see, we've created a very simple light wipe uh, animation. So that's it for the text layer. So you can close it out and then open the small stroke uh, layer. Go to effects, CC, light sweep. Uh, move your timeline all the way to 0.00. .00 and then start dragging the center of the light sweep. Drag it all the way to approximately 200. So change the value of this to 200. And then click on the clock icon. Move your timeline to two seconds. And then start dragging the animation until it reaches the top corner, which will happen at approximately 1,400. So change the value of this to 1,400 and then click enter. 
And then we will do the same for the bigger stroke. So close the small stroke layer, open the bigger stroke layer, effects, light sweep, move your timeline to 0.00, .00 and start dragging your uh, light sweep animation. This time it will go from right to left. So we um, animated the smaller stroke to go from uh, left to right and to mix it up a little bit we will move uh, this light sweep from right to left at exactly the point where the smaller stroke animation reaches its end. It will create this nice little glowing shining effect. So we need to start actually at two seconds with the bigger stroke animation. So move your timeline to two seconds and then move the center of uh, the light uh, sweep to approximately 1550 will be enough. And then click on the uh, clock icon and move your timeline to four seconds and then start dragging the animation and move it all the way to approximately minus 200. Close the bigger stroke uh, layer and let's play it out and see what we've actually created. So move your timeline all the way to 0, 0.00 and press enter on your keyboard to see the final product. All right, so yeah, that's basically it. Very simple, clean animation. So the only thing that's left is to repeat um, the process for all the other alerts. And it's actually a very simple uh, process. So yeah, before we do that, let's actually export the first one. And then we will just go ahead and replace uh, the actual layers, which will make the the whole process much faster so click on file go to export uh, you can either use the adobe media encoder which doesn't work for me so i always use just the uh, the render queue classic uh, inside after effects uh, for the output mode this is the important part you need to change uh, actually sorry i almost forgot uh, go back to the um, composition and make sure the background is not there. If you click this little icon right here, it will make um, the background transparent. And then go ahead and change the format to QuickTime and change the channels to RGB plus alpha, which will actually allow us to not have any background and, and make it transparent. Uh, we also don't need any audio, uh, so change the audio output to off and press OK and then select where would you like the the alert to be saved. Ideally you want that to happen uh, inside the, the same folder and name it follower alert raw for now and then press render and let it render out and then once it's rendered, you can close the render queue and start replacing uh, the layers. So this is where it becomes very easy. So the only thing we need to uh, replace is the strokes and the text, right? Because we want that to change uh, for each of those alerts. So let's start with the text. If you right click on it, go to replace footage, file, and then search for the donation, for example, donation folder that we've created and add in the text for the donation. You see it changed the text and it kept the animation uh, that we've created. So yeah, it becomes very easy at this point. You do the same for the smaller stroke. Uh, there it is. And then you do the same for the bigger stroke. And as you can see, the effects stayed there. 
but it's a different color and a different text. And now we repeat the process with the rendering. And yeah, you do this four times, make sure uh, you select the, the same preset. So once again, QuickTime, uh, RGB plus alpha, uh, we don't need any audio. Make sure you save it in the right folder. And then go ahead and start rendering it. Repeat this process for the remaining two alerts uh, as well. And um, yeah, once you're done, I will see you in Adobe Premiere actually, because we need to change this to a different format, which I do in um, um, Adobe Premiere because it doesn't work for me in uh, After Effects, but we basically need to change the format to WebM format. Uh, which is something that you can do either in the Adobe Media Encoder. If it works for you, do it that way. If it doesn't work for you, then you can also do it in Adobe Premiere, which I will show you in a minute. And lastly, don't forget to <laughs> make the, uh, or get rid of the background and, and keep it transparent. So export everything uh, from uh, After Effects and I will see you in Adobe Premiere. And of course, guys, I forgot once again, make sure you save the project as well, just in case you need to make any changes uh, in the future. So yeah, keep the After Effects file saved as well. So guys, as I said, we will only use Premiere to change the format from QuickTime to WebM. So let's go ahead and import all the alerts that we've created. So that's donation alert follower alert um, and yeah as I said of course if this works for you right away inside uh, After Effects then just change the format to WebM right away uh, for me you know I've always done it uh, this way using the the Premiere with the WebM plugin which I don't think is uh, available by default I might be wrong uh, however, I remember that I had to download a special plugin uh, for this. So I will also leave a link in the description down below. Uh, and yeah, let's start with the donation alert. So click and drag it to the timeline, go to file, export, media, and then change the format to WebM, uh, which is right here and select the folder where would you like the alert to be saved and then the most important part is to make sure that the image settings and codec settings are on point so frame rate 60 width 1920 height 1920 as well codec settings vp9 of course quality all the way to 100 and then this is the most important make sure you've toggled this which says include alpha channel and uh, yeah if everything is correct go ahead and export um, the actual alert and then repeat this process with all the three remaining alerts and uh, yeah then the last thing that's uh, left to do is to import those alerts to our Streamlabs and we will do that in a couple of seconds. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and import all the alerts that we've created onto our alert box. And the way we've designed our alert requires the name of the new follower or the subscriber to be in the middle. So in the general settings, make sure that this is set to the middle um, layout. And also I've made a tutorial talking about the alert box in detail. So if you have not seen that tutorial, make sure you check it out. I will put a link um, in the video itself. It pops up uh, in the right corner as I'm talking. And um, yeah, then we can go ahead and start uh, importing the, the actual alert. So let's start with the follow alert. Once again, make sure the layout is the middle one alert animation, um, text animation, I will leave that up to you. Go ahead and play around with it. Um, and as I said, I also made a tutorial 
uh, talking about those things already, so I'm not gonna uh, talk about them in too much detail. And yeah, let's proceed and actually put in the the alerts. So make sure you highlight it, select, and then press save settings, and then open your streaming software and let's test it out see how it looks as you can see it's working the only thing that we need to change is the actual text because it's too big so we will go to the font settings and we will change the font size to 26 i think that will be all right and we will test it again and yeah that's perfect so yeah, as you can see, our alerts are working. By the way, if you don't know how to test the alerts, it's uh, this button right here. It says test widgets. You click on it and then you click on follow. And then also you can make it bigger or smaller. Place it wherever you need on your actual layout. And yeah, that's it, guys. Then you repeat this process of importing and selecting uh, with all the other alerts that we've created and yeah that's it for the whole process so as i said guys this is a a good way of of starting you know it's nothing fancy nothing complicated um, but yeah the goal of this tutorial was to show you how it works um, to show you how you can do it yourself, maybe save you some money, uh, learn a new skill. So I hope we've managed to do that, guys. And yeah, just make sure everything is lined up, make sure everything fits. Uh, and yeah, that's it for uh, this tutorial. The only thing that's left is to change the duration of the alert is something that we forgot to do so uh, our alert is six seconds long so make it one second less in uh, streamlabs itself so uh, go all the way down to five seconds uh, so you prevent the alert from uh, you know repeating itself twice if you make it five seconds it will have enough time to use the streamlabs animation which in our case is fade in fade out or any other animation uh, of your choice and that's it guys then you basically just do the same thing for the subscription donation and the host make sure the text uh, size is uh, small enough to fit and then let's also make sure that the alert duration is set uh, to five seconds uh, for all those alerts as well and then of course guys if you use regular obs you just copy this address uh, and then you create a new browser source it's basically the same thing as in streamlabs obs and yeah then you will be able to do the same as you can see we have it twice here uh, but yeah, if you use obs then you need to use the browser source and that's it for this tutorial so guys, I hope I was able to help you out in any way, whether you learned a new skill or you saved some money or you just, you know, made your stream look better. Um, yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, leave a feedback in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below as well. I will do my best to answer as soon as possible. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to this channel, I would really much appreciate it, uh, as well as a thumbs up. Uh, and yeah, guys, I will see you soon with another tutorial. Much love. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.